Okay. So, right. like, we're actually like a. Oh yeah. Good news, everyone. I've got access to a welder now. I've got a small MIG that should do the job. Now, I've got to do a lot of prep work before I go there, though. That might be the one and only time I can use the welder. Uh, and I've I got a lot of things to weld on this Jeep. Uh, one is all these holes in the floor. That big hole there, that big hole there. And the cowl. I'll show you a quick preview. i got a big hole here. Massive. And... Uh, there's a, there's a big hole in the back here as well, which is a huge problem, obviously, if you're driving in the rain. And then there's all these little holes which you can plug, but I'm just going to get a piece of uh, sheet metal and just put a piece of sheet metal over that, weld it down. So what we're going to do right now and for the rest of the day is prep. Clean it off with soap and water, degrease it. Yeah, I'm going to get POR 15, and then I'm going to top coat it with some other black paint because POR 15 does not like the sun. It goes all white and gross. All right, here's what we're dealing with here. <sighs> We've got a couple different kinds of hammers, a ball peen, uh, a welding hammer with a point and a flat end, I guess. A couple pliers, rip off some rust. Safety, wear some goggles and a mask when you're dealing with rust, definitely. Got a new sanding disc, a cutoff wheel, there's a grinding disc in the shed, a wire wheel, uh, and a drill and some other stuff and some wire brushes. Let's get started on that bastard. Okay, so I just WD WD black. I just WD forty the shit out of all these bolts on both sides. Don't know if I'm gonna need to take that seat out, but this one would definitely help. Oh, Jeep needs to be cleaned tremendously. Kinds of garbage in here. Just gonna go in with a brush, loosen everything up. So here's the floor pan. It says left side floor pan, Jeep CJ7, 68 to 86. Well, given those stats, I think we're probably gonna need to bend the shit out of this to make it work. I cut the floor into four pieces. These two are done. I'll show you what I've got going on so far. They sit in something, something along the lines of that. This just in, it's the next day and I can use the welder for a little bit. I don't have to go to his house today anymore and just use the bed. All right, let's begin today's tasks by getting a wire brush because it's eight in the morning and I don't want to wake up my neighbors. And just scrape some of this away. We'll scrape most of it away. Then clean it with degreaser because there's some grease in various spots. And then clean it with metal prep. And then it's ready for paint. I got some little rollers for the for the big areas. Some brushes. Getting all the nooks and crannies. And some 320 sandpaper. Just to make life a little easier when I recoat a second time. Okay, I've got a four to one mixture of degreaser in here, four parts water to one part degreaser, as per the instructions. All right, so I've gone and put some uh, D, wait, what is this? I gotta put some metal prep into the uh, bottle here, just a little bit, because I don't need much. It's blue. And the instructions, they say, to spray it on, put it on with a brush or a roller or something to, I guess, agitate it a little bit. And then you, uh, what do you do after that? You let it sit for 10 to 20 minutes to remove rust. You let it sit for 30 minutes. So let's go and do that. I'm gonna let that do its thing, and I'm gonna go get some food. Oh, it's cold out here. It's fucking the end of May, and it's cold as dicks. So that's gonna be a lot of patchwork, but I think it's doable. Those are shot, those bushings. Ugh. Now, just to let that dry. 
All right, I'm back, baby. And we got ourselves a welder now. It is dry as a bone. There's no no flakes anywhere. It's oh. I'm gonna paint that prep over there, paint over there. My girlfriend's gonna come here tomorrow or later today. She can paint the rest because she loves painting. And then I just gotta finish that side of the floor, cut some metal, weld it up, we're done. But it's never that simple, so. Before we continue, I have to make a literal repair on my pants. Pro tip, fold your tape over so that it can never get lost on you. So I'm gonna pour the pour 15 <laughs> into this bucket here, just a little bit at a time. And when I'm done with it, uh, I'm gonna just cover it with this plastic and an elastic to uh, help prevent it from curing too fast while I wait to do another coat. We'll see if it works. All right, I've got some pour 15 in here. It is black as hell. Uh, I'm just gonna paint it on. Now what I'm gonna do right now in the next 15 minutes, is see if I can take that off, this running board, cause I don't need it in the Rover 1 build. Plus I need to take it off to get at that hole, that hole, that hole. I also need to take off these fenders. But for now I wd 40 both sides. Uh, yeah, it's probably gonna be a bitch, but hopefully it'll come off. So let's get started. Broken. There we go. Pierced. Hi, cute girl. Hey, Mimi. What do you got to say for yourself? Are you a little painter? Yeah. Right, she's doing awesome. Thank you. The whole back floor is good. Oh, uh, my God. No, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Ah, ah. Jesus. Oh. What? Yeah, I've got some salt. Jesus H Christ. I hope that paint stays there for several weeks. <laughs> right now I'm just removing the rocket panels and fender flares while I get my ass kicked by my degenerate brother. This is a nightmare for anyone who does body work. <sighs> but thankfully in the Rover 1 there's uh, that checker plate that goes along this whole area. And so I don't have to do a pretty job. I just have to do a job that lasts. You get the God, Jesus! Oh, oh! Oh, in the head! So since I have a Jeep, these things don't come off easy whatsoever. They're all rusted out and stripped. So what I'm forced to do is tear that back enough so I can get a metal cutting sawzall blade in there and then I can cut it out. This one just ripped out, thankfully, so we're gonna see what the rest are like. All right, that is a fenderless Jeep. I gotta say, it looks kind of weird. Uh, but I'm gonna have to drive around like that for a little bit. Ugh, hopefully I don't get pulled over. All right, I've went underneath and cut a couple of the brackets for this step bar. Now I'm just stepping on it to bend it out of the way so I can cut some more. big guns okay this side's ready for paint everything is degreased ready to go I ground out the door because it's a bit rusty on that side same with the other side we're gonna paint that hinge paint all along the bottom here that fender do that one later and then we can put the sheet metal on well it's another day it's another dollar let me show you what we finished up here we did a lot of painting a lot of rust fixing and not a lot of good videoing on my part, so I'm, I apologize for that, but I just wanted to get moving. And so, this is what we have. That's all pour 15. I've got to do a lot of patchwork, obviously, with that sheet metal. And by the way, we painted one side of that sheet metal, which is good. And then once that's on, 
in the Rover One, if you don't, if you remember, the Rover One has a, a checkered, checkered plates all the way there. So everything here that we did is going to be covered by checkered plate, which is fine. And then this part doesn't have checkered plate. Looks pretty good. Now, you can tell that door and the other door are different color than the rest of the Jeep, right? And so what I have to do is uh, paint that door black to match the rest of the Jeep. So that'll be another video. And then those mirrors, I gotta paint black as well because chrome just don't work. Another day, another dollar, working on the Jeep. The POR15 dried pretty good. It's really shiny. It's really, really shiny. So I went and sanded it with some 320 just to bring the shine down. I didn't sand that, but I did sand that. So it brought the shine down a little bit. But the goal for today is to get the rest of these fenders off and do any amount of patchwork I can in the next three hours because I got a frisbee game. So the way I had to remove the flares yesterday was getting up underneath and twisting these with a pair of pliers because the other side was so rusted out I couldn't get them out with a socket or anything. So it takes forever, but if you can twist it enough, you can yank on it to gather some space in between the flare and the body and I can get a sawzall blade in there and cut and cut the screw and then it just comes right out. And it's time consuming but it works. But before we go and do that we have to take this cover off. Oh so it's a looks like a twist maybe? You can take that out. Hook that back through. Now once we get this flare off, I'll just pop that back for the time being. Saw that coming. The great thing about Sawzalls is that their ba blades bend. And so even though I'm going at an angle, the blade will bend for me and go along the body. Up here. Be careful, ladies and gentlemen. Be careful. All right, so after all that, we're left with a few things and haws. Grind that off, grind that off, grind that one off. A couple more. Once all that's cleaned up, go over with a sanding disc, paint it pour 15, put that light back and we're done. And by the way, <laughs> can't make up my mind. I think, I think, I think, I think, I just saw my friend who had a quite a beautiful Jeep, 37's lift kit. He's got a 48.8 in the rear and it's been doing him well. Now I got an 8.8 .8 in the backyard. That's the one you seen me work on two years ago. Might still keep it. And I might source a Dana 30 without that vacuum thing for the front. And I might just run those two axles because one, I'm not made of money to do one tons and everything and two, I'm not gonna be taking this thing rock jumping. So I think I'm gonna run with those axles. What do you think? Leave it in the comments. Ah, oh, look at that. Didn't even need that. Okay, good enough for me. This entire chunk is temporary, but until I replace it, uh, I don't want it to rust out on me, so I'm just gonna paint it over. And so this whole side's done. It's ready for some sheet metal patchwork. Jeep. And just like that, it's ready for paints. 
almost. I've got the metal prep all on there. Uh, it's, it's just uh, doing its thing right now. Then I'm gonna rinse it off, dry it off. Then it's ready for paint. I also forgot there's a huge rusty bit down there and underneath on both sides. So I've cleaned them off, got the metal ready on there too. Got to patch that hole, that hole, and that hole with sheet metal. And the rest just gets a nifty paint job. And there's that side painted. Also painted those things. <clears throat> They're drying as we speak. Next time I work on this thing, it'll be doing all the metal. Look forward to that. For now, I'm gonna go play Frisbee. It is beautiful outside. And I definitely don't wanna miss it. So until further news, I shall talk to you later.